Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. And there have been um, developments since in the, uh, during the last stream involving me going off to another planet. But let's run through this in, sort of, in some sort of sensible order. So you'll remember that last week I was talking about loading up the misfortune with all the sort of the miscellaneous bits and pieces that I wanted to take with me, and so it was parked here. And but that that led to a rather unfortunate effect where um, tr where the bots were flying all of the bits and pieces that were needed from typically up here because that's where the space platform scaffold is made down to here, and most of them were well, or lots and lots of them were blowing up, and I got through a ridiculous number of bots. And so I decided the best thing to do would be to move the spaceship over to here and load it up over here. So, so I did that. It was relatively easy just um, because it had the ion stream booster tanks, it was able to go plib from here, plop, to up there. And so, we, yeah, I loaded it up with all the bits and pieces I thought I was going to need on Talos. So I had various plans over there and uh, in involving sort of things like power and improving the, the, the rate the facilities worked at and that sort of thing. In order to get this, well, in order to get my plans to, into fruition, though, I had to first make some more space elevators. So as you can see over here, we have a single assembly machine, which is gradually filling up with all the bits and pieces required to make a space elevator, um, and then eventually we'll, we'll churn them out. The only slight problem is, it turns out that if you have the system set up like this, the inserters will take priority over the loaders, so all of the girders that are being made here are being, then being turned into bearings and passed out down this way. And that means this machine over here has lots and lots of bearings in it. In fact, it has almost twice as many as are needed to build a new uh, space elevator, but it's only got nine heavy girders. So this, is, this, isn't, this isn't brilliant. What I think I might need to do is remove that and replace it with one of these, because then they'll take it in turns, and they'll, they'll pass one out to here, one out to here, one out to here, one, and so back and forth, back and forth, and it'll, it'll keep it quite nice and balanced. Granted, at the moment, it's not a huge problem, because I've got the space elevator I need, and there's actually quite a lot in here. So, and, and, the, and this one is set to cut off, to stop running when there's five, so this, this inserter will now stop. So we are just going to build up probably two more in here, and then that may well be enough for the rest of time because you don't need enormous numbers of space elevators. You basically only need one per planet you want to go to, and that's only if you're going to put space elevators everywhere. So, to be honest, actually, it's working well enough. F fiddling with this is probably not necessary. In fact, we've probably got enough now that we could turn all of this off, demolish it, stop it feeding in all of these inputs, and just let it, let it calm down a little bit, because there are quite a lot of resources tied up in this machine that we may want to rescue later and use for something else. As part of this, I realised that the, making the space elevator requires a lot of concrete. As you can see in here, it, it takes a thousand refined concrete. And to make it refined concrete, it takes um, 20 concrete to make 10. So it takes two. So we need 2,000 concrete in here. So in order to get that working, I've got this belt coming up here. And this has meant, and in order to get this working, I, st I decided it would be a good idea to put the concrete onto the, onto the uh, space bus properly. Before, it was being brought over to here by delivery cannon. So you can see there's a... There's a quite a lot of concrete available in this delivery cannon chest up here that is gradually being dribbled out onto this belt as we need it for for making these mechanical facilities you see up here and for making the, uh, the what are the, these like some sort of particle colliders and, and so on so there are a few machines up here that do require the concrete previously it was coming up by delivery cannon but now we've got the train system that's been modernized there is still a lot of concrete in here that we need to get through before we can just switch before we can get rid of it completely but it's you know it's a step in the right direction so that's being brought up by the train in the normal way i won't run through the details of that because you've, you've seen enough of that in the last couple of um, last couple of weeks. And so I then flew off with the Misfortune all the way over to Talos, parked it here, and started building this large solar array. And the, the point of the large solar array is that it will then generate all of the electricity that's, that's needed down on the planet, and we can then feed that down through the, through the space elevator once we've built the space elevator. I'll get onto that in a moment. So we've got a large area of solar panels. This is generating... Uh, it says 2.4 gigawatts, that's because I've got cheat mode turned on so everything's nice and bright. It, the, the, uh, that's doubling the amount that will actually come out of these because when you when you have a solar panel in space, it only produces 50% of the, the rated power for balance related reasons. So it's all a little bit weird. I think I, personally I would have done it differently, but anyway, it, it has been done like this. So we are, so we are producing 1.2 gigawatts and that will hopefully be enough to keep the planet reasonably satisfied. Um, uh, and at least that's the plan. There's also a space elevator dropped in here and a loop of rail around here. So the idea of this is that we're going to have a station at the top here where the uh, the trains that come up from, from the ground are able to drop off absolutely everything they bring up. So that's going to be the beryllium that's being made down there. And it's also going to be overflow. So there might be some core chunks in there. There might be some iron ore. There might be some copper ore. Whatever there is that we don't actually need down on the planet will all be brought up here and dumped into, this, into the spaceship to be taken away. Now, I don't know exactly what the spaceship 
system is going to look like yet, because Mark is still developing it. But once he has, then I can build up a sort of whatever his landing system is over here, get that working, and probably probably redesign this rail up here. This is just here as a sort of a, a proof of concept. And so at the other end of this, we have a very similar system. This is down on Talos. We have a a um, at the bottom end of the space elevator and a loop of rail going around here to uh, to, to allow the trains to come out and, and load up with all of the stuff. So the stuff will come at the moment. The the stuff that I'm referring to so obliquely is all coming out of these. Um, it is all currently being shipped off by these delivery cannons. So some of them are shipping beryllium to where it's needed. Some are, are shipping excess core chunks. Some are shipping excess copper or excess glass, and so on and so on. So all of these are then capable of getting rid of all of that excess. But this does mean this is all in more or less the same place, which should mean I can then feed all of the junk that I want to get rid of down a belt over here and then just put it into a train here and then let it all get sorted out when it reaches Norbit or perhaps Norvis and that'll make things much much easier I can just get rid of it all and um, and not worry about all these delivery cannons which also means we'll be able to remove a load of this stuff and so on but I was talking about power so let's have a look oh, down here we are currently using we're currently trying to use uh, 830 something megawatts uh, this is probably because the system isn't actually running at full whack at the moment um, we are we are in a slightly odd position where we 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 are having an, we have an insufficient supply of the inputs, which means some of the outputs, some of the some of the systems aren't running quite as quickly as they might. But overall, the system is is working reasonably well. And this brings me on neatly to the next um, expansion or improvement that I was, I've been doing. So one of the reasons I wanted to come over to Talos was because we weren't producing anything like enough beryllium to keep the whole factory satisfied. And previously we had a system that was based around pulverizers, normal chemical plants, pulverizers, and um, and, furn and, and, the, and the industrial furnaces. And they were dealing with two blue belts of the barrel ore that comes out of here and turning it into beryllium. So in order to improve that, I've, I've got I've now redesigned it. So we've now moved on to the, the what is currently the state of, current state of the art. So that's tier three modules, advanced chemical plants, advanced furnaces, and uh, wide area beacons. And so that has allowed me to in, in this in the area covered by this beacon, which you can't see very well because of the sort of the sand color, but um, hopefully you can see it well enough to see, at least see which machines are lighting up. This covers all of the machines around it with the uh, however many um, speed modules that is that that are pushing the speed out. And then all of these machines are already extremely quick because of the, because of them being the advanced versions, and you can put more modules in than you can with the basic versions. And so we've got here we've got a machine that's running at a crafting speed of 25 and a half and a crafting speed of 24. And these are still only running at 4.8 because they're a bit crap, but never mind, they're not all that big, so I can fit a load of them in up there. So this I designed in the um, in the blueprint editor up here, which has allowed me to to make sure everything's nice and balanced. But now I've I've, I've placed a couple of these down in in the real world, as it were. And each of the each each single one of these machines is capable of dealing with an entire blue belt of um, of the input. I'm not sure why this one has stopped. Uh, okay, it's full on the output because that's full on the output. That's full of water. Okay, I've messed up the um, the, the piping here somehow. Um, is it is it because this pipe is full? It is because this pipe is full. Because this this water pipe doesn't go anywhere. Interesting. So this should come over to hit. This should probably uh, maybe a better way to do that would be to put that here, and then delete that one, and actually not put that there, but there, and then have a vertical pipe running just down here. I could spaghetti it in over here, but this is kind. Of, this 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 actually this this isn't ne isn't needed either. So I, I could do a bit of redesigning over here and get this to be a little bit neater, but I I, I haven't yet. Anyway, yes. The point is that the water, we need to get rid. Of, we need to have a dump system to get rid of the excess water from here, which these, these there we go. We have now allowed for. So we now have a nice flood of the um, beryllium uh, powder coming out here at the top of these after these these three processing steps, which are sufficiently well balanced that if I feed one direct, if I feed them directly through like this, we can we can have we can de we can eat an entire blue belt on the input and have two blue belts of the three blue belts of the powder coming out of each of these which will then go into each of these um, e each of these furnaces to be turned into the molten stuff which we can then turn into ingots so whilst the system here isn't perfectly balanced it's close enough when it's running merrily uh, when, when it hits a sort of a, a steady state it can take in a solid blue belt at the bottom and happily deal with it through one 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 three and then whatever half of this number of machines at the top is and it it does work these machines are not running absolutely flat out which is a little bit of a shame but never mind I don't really care there I don't care about wasting a little bit of this of the, of the effectiveness of these machines because we are able to take in the full blue belt at the bottom and out and, and get through it all and turn it into 
into beryllium at the most efficient way we can. Now I should probably look into the num into the proportions here, and I shall put the numbers up on screen at the moment. But over here we have we have a um, productivity boost of 31%, 31%, 31%, 40%, and then. 0%. So we're doing we are producing a lot of extra beryllium for the amount of input we're putting in. I think I reckon when I was looking at the numbers in the last episode we were going to get somewhere between 20 and 25% extra uh, out of this. So we've got we've got a lot more coming out than we had before from the same amount of input. We've done similarly up here I've upgraded all of these machines to have the tier 3 modules and they're well they are capable of dealing with all of the um, all, all, all of the uh, barrel core chunks that are coming through, just about. They're certainly dealing with them faster than they're being dug up, as you can see by the fact that they were idle until I, until I could just came and looked at it now. And then that is being fed down as the second blue belt into, into the bottom of this machine. So we've got a system here that's running as fast, as fast as it was before, but with more productivity modules in it. But we've then taken this one up from having two belts coming out of it to three belts coming out of it. So this one is going to struggle even more, which is why it's a bit pathetic at the moment. But in order to fix that, I'm going to go off and, and put in some extra mines. So that is a thing I haven't done yet, but we talked about this quite a bit at the end of the last episode. There's a nice big patch down there, there's a small one there that's an easy access, there's a, a reasonable one there that's relatively easy access. And this is going to require me to go out and do various types of combat. I've talked about this a little bit last week as well. I've, I've now upgraded to a Power Armor Mark III, and so I've put lots and lots of upgrades into this one. So I've got some really good jetpacks that allow me to fly quickly, and a couple more small ones that allow me to fly a bit, <laughs> they add a little bit more onto the speed. So each of these is worth three speeds and each of these is worth one speed. So I have a total of eight available. Uh, then I've got quite a lot of personal laser defences, both sniper and normal, or submachine sub -machine as it calls, here, calls it here. So short range and long range. I haven't actually calculated the DPS for these two, but let's do that now and again put that on screen and we'll see which one does the, uh, which one will do more, which one will do more damage if you get in range. And I've got this portable nuclear reactor, the hope being that this will kick out enough power to keep everything running. The thing is, this has a maximum production, uh, produ power production of 2.4 megawatts. These have a maximum consumption of 6.3 megawatts each. So, and I've got batteries here that store 75 megajoules. So running running the whole lot in, in total will mean I'll get about two seconds of all of my lasers firing before I'll have to run away and reload. However, that is enough for me to fly in, troll the biters a little bit, zap them in the face, and then get them to chase after me into some, some other defences that I might have put up. So we're reckoning that that is... We're, basically, I did a bit of playing around with this in the last stream, and it's... It's not very effective. I mean, I, I can take out biters to an extent. It's quite it's quite effective against some of the nest stuff, as you can see here. We've taken out one of those big worms, then oop, and then I get shot out of the sky like that, which is unfortunate. There we go. Fly away again. The problem is when when the when when I try when I see any behemoth biters, it drains my lasers of power very very quickly, um, and then I have to t basically I have to have to then kite them over to a to an area like this where there's lots and lots of laser turrets in order to be able to deal with them. Everything smaller than Behemoth tier is fairly easy to deal with. I can, I can, I can, I can shoot them down. I mean, that one, for example, is gone straight away. These worms and the um, and the and the spawners are fine as well. Um, I, I can deal with that, and I can also tank quite a bit more damage because I've got now got the better armor. So in theory, yes, I can now go in and I can do I can do a bit of damage like that, and it's it's sort of okay-ish. It's not great though, because as you see, I can go in, I can do a bit of damage, and then I have, but then I have to fly away very, very quickly. And if you look down here, my battery is now almost completely flat. And if I have a look in the suit, all of the lasers have used up. Well, most of the lasers have used up a significant chunk of their power. So it's now going to take probably about five minutes to recharge all of that. So this system, not really suitable for this sort of combat. I and mean, I could do a little bit of rearranging. I could put a submachine laser down there, get rid of another two of the lasers, have another nuclear reactor in here, or I could put in more batteries. But again, it's a bit... it's, it's, it's not great. However, right at the end of the last stream, Tristan suggested that I should put in one of the Tesla devices um, into my suit as well, which is this thing, the energy absorber. So I could put down some Tesla coils um, in the, inside my base and then have one of these in my suit and I would be able to then pull in or maybe several of these in my suit because it's 12 meg 12 pulls in 12 megawatts so that would help me charge things up reasonably quickly I think um, and, and, and help, help me and it would be much much better than the than the, uh, the new portable nuclear reactor that I've got so I think that's worth 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 a shot. We'll give that a try, see if that's any better. I think I, I still don't think I'm going to be particularly effective in combat because that, that sort of only having about two seconds of, of firing before I run out of juice 
is going to be quite quite restrictive when I come over here and try and try and get these guys. Alternatively, maybe I could fly in a big circle around them, try and kite them all away, and then fly back through and take out all the nests. That might be better. Alternatively, I could just use the nuclear artillery and say, I don't want you guys to be over here. Please, please, please stop it. Um, and just drop the, drop these things in over here, and then maybe go in and do any cleanup of, of sort of worms and things with the uh, with the lasers afterwards. And to be, I think this is going to be a much more effective way of dealing with them. The only problem is that the uh, the artillery, the nukes are great. They will do quite a lot quite a lot of damage to things like um, nests, but they're not very good at bi against biters, especially the behemoth ones. And they're not very good against the bigger worms either, as you can see momentarily. So there you go. All the, all the nests have been absolutely wrecked. But these worms and these biters, they don't really care. It's a good start. I mean, we've we've dealt with the nest, so we won't be spawning any more biters in down here. Um, but now they're going to come off, and they're probably going to start eating my uh, e eating my umbrella defense and my and, and my steam turbines and stuff so forth over here. So you you can see why this this wasn't this wasn't ideal. There's lots of stuff getting wrecked. So. Yeah, this is not the way. Not the way to do it. I was kind of hoping that if because th th they would know where the artillery shots had come from, and they come running up this way because the nukes came from up here, and then they would be interrupted by this wall of lasers over here. But it was not to be. So we shall have to. Uh, we shall have to do some rebuilding, or alternatively, just rethink how we do this and put the laser turrets in down here so they intercept the biters a bit sooner. Oh, here's a comedy. This bot here is flying back and forth, repairing this. Um, uh, repairing this umbrella defense, but each time it flew over, it was getting spat up by this worm. Um, fortunately, it seems, it seems to have managed to repair it quickly enough that time it didn't get attacked. But that meant the worm would miss it every single time, but would do a little bit of damage to the umbrella, and then the bot would come back to repair it, and then fly off and get, get spat at again, and back and forth. It, it was a bit silly. So, because I'm not very good at planning ahead and being organised and stuff, I forgot quite a lot of the stuff that's going to be required for this base up in Talos. I did bring over a load of the space elevator cable in order to get the space elevator built. I think I brought about a thousand of it over, but then it turns out it needs 1,463 in order to get this one running, and it's then going to get through a certain amount over time as it just sort of chugs along and gets, well, and gets and gets through it. In, in maintenance, these things get through. It's sort of one every four minutes or something like that. We'll, we'll look, let's, let's see if we can find the exact numbers here. And oh, no, sorry, four per, almost five per minute, not uh, not one every five minutes, uh, the opposite way around. So we're going to need to bring quite a lot of them over here and just make sure there's a steady supply of them coming in by the, via the spaceship. I feel that five per minute is quite a lot. I mean, I'd, I'd need to probably bring over several thousand in order to keep this running until the spaceships arrive. So I don't know if that's an I ideal way of doing things, especially as we haven't really got it running yet. Um, and I do have most of the stuff down on the planet that I need, but not all of it. So yeah, as I say, I, I wasn't organised enough. I brought over about yeah about eleven hundred space cable uh, elevator elevator cable. Um, I did. I brought the trains and I brought the, brought the track for them, as you can see over here. We've got the tra trains in there and and the, and the space railway. But I didn't bring the batteries that they require to power them because I forgot that space trains use batteries. I didn't bring any charging devices or anything like that. So I have dispatched the misfortune to head all the way back over to Norvis orbit, and it has now in fact arrived. It's got this got there. Um, I've redesigned it a little bit, which is why it's now this rather ugly shape, because I want because it was really, really slow. It was taking something like 15, almost 20 minutes to fly between Norvis and Talos, and that is too long. So I've redesigned it a bit. I've put more solar panels in it to allow it to generate a bit more power and hopefully keep things running. If we look at this th over here, you'll see that we have this this is the flight this is the flight time over here. So it took from about 34 minutes to 25 minutes. So it only, it only actually took nine minutes. That's that's that means it went, went about twice as fast as it did last time, because we've got these ion engines that are in, ideally taking uh, about 13 megawatts. However, we've got the power supplies over here, the solar panels, producing about three, uh, about 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 eight, um, about eight megawatts, which is only about half of what it wanted. So for quite a lot of its flight, it was producing, it was only generating a lot less power. However, we then got a bit closer into the sun, so we started to generate a bit more, and that nearly kept it happy. Actually, that's quite impressive. So. I think before we send the ship out again, it will be worth making it a bit bigger. Maybe making some more of the Holmium solar panels so you can get we can get a bit more power for it, um, and then and um, then we can rebuild it with a bit more storage space on it as well, and just and just make things that make it a little bit better and hopefully a little bit less ugly as well, make it a slightly more uh, a slightly more symmetrical and spaceshipy shape. I talked a bit about the power generation up here. So we, if we look we look at this one. We, we said we're making okay, we're making 1.2 gigawatts, which is good. And then down on Talos, we're using, well, we, we've we've seen if we look look back in time, it's, it's peaked here at, at you. Oh no, I can't I can't tell the peak there. It's peaked somewhere around here at using 370 from that one and 530 from this one. 
which means 900 megawatts. So that is still within the amount we are able to able to produce at the moment from the um, uh, from from the from from solar from the solar in orbit alone. Which means, in theory, I should be able to get rid of the free power system here, and this will free up. Not only will this free up a lot of space, it will hopefully free up some more UPS as well and allow us to run the game a bit quicker. The problem is, as we touched on earlier, we're not actually generating in quite enough. Um, Barrel ore over here, as you as you've seen, it's, it's all of it's, it's not it's being used up as fast as it's coming in. I've noticed this one has stopped as well. Are you are you having water problems as well? You are. Are you not? This one isn't hooked up either. For goodness sake, <laughs> I have apparently completely fluffed up the um, setting up this system. I completely forgotten that you need to get rid of all of the excesses of whatever stuff you're using to try and get your system running. So we'll rebuild this so it actually work. And the point is that when this is running flat out, these these trains, or more to the point these mines down here, that one and that one, are not capable of bringing the resources in quickly enough. So we had a couple of ideas. One is, as I was saying earlier, we can, I can open up some more mines. That's the obvious way to do it and will probably be, and is the long term probably the best way. The other thought is that I could come down here and I could put speed modules in, in these mines, in all these drills. And so all of these would then pull the ore out of the ground significantly faster. And we have a lot of tier 2 speed modules available now. So I could just shove them in these. And that would give them a fairly significant boost of plus 90%, so almost doubling the speed just from three tier 2 uh, speed modules, because they're 30% each. Um, and so that would get that would get us almost twice as much um, ore out of here, so there'd be twice as much flying through. And that will probably be sufficient. We may need to put more trains in, we may need to use bigger trains, but it will probably be about sufficient. The problem is these, these air scrubbers down here then might not be able to keep up, but that could be expanded. We could put more air scrubbers in, that's, 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 a, that's doable. Um, but also, they, they will mean we'll get through these patches twice as quickly. Now, I don't think these have gone down all that much. They're, they're, they're at 10 and 11 million. I can't remember what they were like when I first tapped them. But they we, we've pulled out a fair amount, but I think there's still a lot in them. Uh, we will eventually need to go out and get these patches of barrel as well, but that would potentially allow us to wait until we've got something a bit better for dealing with the biters, perhaps. the um, Once we've got a, a, a good glaive system working with an energy beamer from uh, from ta from um, the Kalidus orbit, we could then get rid of all of, we could get rid of the, all of the biters much more easily. And I could, and, and at the moment, I, can, I mean, at the moment, I can still nuke these ones over here, and that will get us nice easy access to this patch which will get us an extra five million as I said and then there's this one up here which only has a few biters on it so we can get rid of these and maybe maybe even this one over here and that's a bit small it's not really worth it but as you can see you can see it's not going to be too difficult to expand outwards a little bit with the with the um, with the nuclear artillery the problem is that if we want to do it if we want to do a lot of expansion then it's going to be much harder so you see there we go that's got rid of all of the nests from here we'll get rid of all of the nests from this one I expect we're we gonna get those two at the bottom there. Oh, not quite. Needed to be a little bit further south for that for that to work. Um, but yeah, we can get we can deal with these ones with the uh, with the nuclear artillery without too much difficulty, and then go out and grab these patches. But putting also putting speed modules in these as well could be could be quite a good idea. I think we'll we'll see how it goes. Now I think that's probably enough talking about Talos. You've um, you, you've seen quite a bit of this planet this episode because it's been it's been my, my big push this time. Oh, the uh, the biters are trying to make, trying to get through. Um, yeah, I think that's probably going to be okay. It'd be nicer if there were slightly more uh, turrets in there, but we've got rid of nearly all the biters. It's, it's damaged the wall a bit. We don't seem to have any bots down here or no repair packs, which is a bit unfortunate. And we have we have the um, we have the bots. We've just obviously run out of repair packs. Uh, oh, and there's a lot of them coming in over here. Anyway, yes, that's enough about Talos. Let's go off and look at so let's go off and look at something else. Over in Norva's orbit, Mike has been very busy. I touched last time out on how he got a system here making a space scaffold and then turning that into space plating because that's needed for uh, one of the uh, one of the sciences. He's now got that being fed up here and he's now got, he's now got all of these running. So here you can see he's producing the electrical shielding data, which is ion stream that comes in by train, blank data cards comes in by train, iridium plate comes in by oh, in, in, in ingot form by train as well. So all of this yeah is now being supplied by train quite nicely. Although the plastic and the iridium is coming up through Mike's weird system of I told you all about this last week and I don't want to look at it again because it'll make my head hurt. <laughs> Similarly up here, laser shielding data is the material testing packs, as usual for material science, and iridium and, and, uh, and data cards. Um, and, and so he's able to produce those and, 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 and up here and the uh, particle beam shielding data. So this is the one that takes the uh, space platform plating for reasons, I'm, well I guess it's detecting how well the plating protects against particle beams. Who knows. But all of these are then producing the data up here, including oh, ah yes, this this is the difficult one. I, I touched on this last week, I think. Um, it's not so much that it's expensive because you use five plates and you get 
uh, six data cards out, so that's pretty good, that's really cheap. Um, but it uses five different materials, only one of which he probably already had in the area. So this required him to set up new systems to bring in the Holmium and the Beryllium over here. So these are going to be brought in in ingot form by train, unload, and then he's, he's doing this through the capture to train method. So a train will turn up, it'll park here, um, it'll unload into here as un until a, until it fills up the warehouse here, then it'll go off and get some more, and then probably come back again. Although he does have a limiting system set up here, so... <clears throat> I mean, I'm... Not <laughs> it's sort of somewhere in between. So, the, in Factorio, there's two ways you can use your trains. You can either have them run... You can either have them not use any intelligence at, at all, and just run... Go to the pick-up until they're full, then go to the drop-off till they're empty. In which case, your train will spend... As long as you've got a good supply, your train will spend most of its time sitting in the drop-off station, gradually unloading its cargo as it, as it gets used up by the facilities there. And then, when it, when it finally empties, because it's all been used up, it'll go off, get some more, and come back again. So, the theory is that it spends all its time sitting here, waiting. The other way to do it is you have a system where the train can unload all of its cargo and then go off and sit in a, and sit in the pickup station and then when uh, and, and the drop off station only only calls for a train when it's got enough space to unload an entire train into its storage facilities. The latter means you only need you need to have one train per thing you're dropping off. Uh, so one, so in this case, it would be one train that goes from the beryllium pickup area to all of the different places that require beryllium. The former, where you have the train sit in the drop-off station, means you need to have one train for each drop-off place that will go off, grab some, and then come back and sit there. Um, you may need yeah, you may need additional trains in the second one if you've got enough throughput, but in theory you can start off with just a single one. Um, the, this is some sort of weird conglomeration of the two, in that he's got he's got limits set up here, so the train will only come over here when it's um, when he's got less than five thousand beryllium plates in the, in the warehouse. But when it gets here, it will sit there until this in fact, manufactory has chewed through all of those plates and turned them in, all those in, all the ingots and turned them into plates. And then it, and then it will set off once it's empty, and then it will sit at the other end until it comes back in. So it's, it's some sort of weird halfway in between system, which I I don't really like because it, I feels, it feels like it's going to jam up the other end a bit too much, whilst also not being able to be used for other places that require beryllium, like the, the astro science or the main science park. So, yeah, that's a bit of a weird in-betweeny. Um, I think that needs to be... I don't know. I'm, I'm un I'm un I am uncomfortable with it as, it as it is. And the same for the, for the um, uh, Holmium up here as well. He's also made a mistake where he's got um, a, a loader trying to unload from the train onto a belt that goes splack into, smack into the side of the um, manufactory. He actually needs another loader in here to load... To actually, to, to, so he needs one to unload from the train onto a belt, and then one to load from the belt into the into the manufactory, which he's got wrong, and there isn't room to, to, to fix that because this, this rail is too close. Um, <clears throat> that's going to need to be fixed. There are various ways you could do that, inc um, including putting the... Um, the unloader onto this side of the uh, belt or moving the rail down and there, there are there are various ways this could be fixed and he'll have to decide which one of those he wants to do but this these were filled up by the the simple expedient of hand filling them I, I believe which is why he's uh, why he's got some in here despite the fact that the system just won't straight up won't work but anyway yes he's got through with all of these um, different resources that are being brought in so the two new exotic ones and the memory cards and iridium he's already got uh, iron he apparently already had for other reasons and rare metals oh yeah because they go into the material testing packs he's then able to make this alloy um, al experimental alloy data where he alloys them, them all together and then gets memory cards out and those are being fed up here to all of these machines which are then merrily making the uh, material supplies testing pack for uh, catalogs and those can then be, as 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 always, they're shipped down, 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 down the belt here. And it looks like, oh, they're starting to starting to back up already. That's that's nice. So he's, he's obviously either made lots of them or he hasn't filled his train up yet. Um, okay, so they're coming down here across underneath the railway line to then be fed into the into the warehouses from the top. Oh yeah, because his train picks up from the bottom. Okay, that's that's fair enough. Um, so so these these have not been these have oh they have been set up for material science up to four thousand up to up to eight eight thousand sorry. So there is, in fact, yes, there is a thousand material science tech catalog four in here already. Um, even though there aren't any on the belt flowing into it, that's that's a bit weird. Maybe he's done. Maybe, I suspect there's been some sort of funny shenanigans being worked on, be, being done over here. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But this means he now has all of the science, all of the uh, catalogs in here. So next time his train comes over, it can pick up all four of them and ship them all over to the, the, the science area. Let's see if that's been done. So over here, no, we only have three of them. So oh, the, the the programming over here has not been done yet. So that, that's that's left to be done, uh, and that'll go over and grab. And then we can tell the train to go over and grab some of the, some of the tier four ones. Go along here, replace all of these with them. Um, 
with with tier four catalogs, and then yeah, then the train will start merrily trundling back and forth and getting all of the science, all of the catalogs needed to get the science sciencing even better over here. So yeah, there's been some good progress there. That's uh, that's an impressive level of uh, impressive jump forwards, and we're now almost ready to start doing material science four. So uh, I would say Mike is ahead at this point because none of the rest of us have got onto the tier four sciences. Tristan has been doing a bit of the prep for that, as I shall show you um, next time. But Mike is very much in the lead because he is this close, he says, holding fingers quite close together, to making the material science testing factor 4. And so, as I touched on in the last video, we are a bit short of, well, we're using it, trying to use Iridium up faster than we're producing it, basically. So, Mike has, has started pl making plans to go over to Kothar. He says he started prepping. Presumably that means he's, he's started filling up a warehouse with all the bits and pieces he's going to need. Or maybe he's redesigning his, um, his uh, Iridium processing facilities like I redesigned my Beryllium processing. Either way, he's, he's, making, he's making preparations to head over to Kothar, and and he's also set, set the system over here to prioritise the, um, the the stuff that's coming from the core mining a little bit more highly, uh, rather than the um, the ores that are coming from coming from being dug up out of the ground. Uh, that's not going to make any significant difference to the, to the way the system works, I don't think. But it's it's sort of it's a thing that's it's, it's good good practice to do in general. Um, so here it comes, it comes up here and. Okay, so these are set to only only load when there's less than 100 in here, whereas this is loading all the time. So in theory, if we had loads and loads and loads available on here, it would all just flow in constantly. These wouldn't, and it would and we'd let this one we'd let the warehouse fill up a bit with the. Uh, w um, but because we don't have enough, we are topping up from the mines, which is the correct way to do things. So yeah, that's great. Then over here, so maybe he's going to be reconsidering all of this system and um, and changing all of these all of these chemical plants to the advanced ones. Um, upgrading these beacons, upgrading everything to tier three productivity and speed modules. You know, all the, all the sort of stuff I was talking about earlier on with the with the brilliant processing is all going to be equally valid up here, um, except for this stage with the um, with the centrifuges. He might just need to put in more of this. That that will leave that up to him. But essentially, all, a lot of this is probably going to be replaceable with a, a significantly smaller system that's going to probably run a bit faster. And as I think we noted over here, the limiting factor of all of this system is how fast these belts can take all of the outputs out away from the uh, from the chemical plants here. So, it, with, with, with any luck, he'll also do a sort of a, a, a bit of a redesign, a bit like the one that Tristan's done, where the um, the, the the red beads, they, yeah, the cation exchange beads get looped straight back around and put into the back, straight back into the machine, as does the unused um, crushed irid iridite. So you don't need to cram all of that onto the belt. The belt is the belt is literally just there to take the powder and stuff away. Um, rather than recycling it down here like this, which is God, he's, oh my god, he's sending it all the way back up to the warehouse up here to recycle it. Yeah, that could that could be done much more effectively. And if you're doing it with fewer machines because they're much 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 faster machines and they're being speed modulated to crazy crazy levels, then that's going to be a lot neater and, and should work a lot better. So yes, I think this this system could be made to run quite a bit faster, quite a bit more effectively. Uh, so there's definitely room for improvement there, and that is probably what he has been working. Right, I've been talking for quite a long time now, so I think this is going to be a good point to draw the line. So please come back tomorrow where I should talk about uh, what uh, some of the things that are, uh, are not related to um, getting more beryllium and getting more iridium. Uh, there's, there, there could, because we have been up to quite a lot of other stuff as well during the last stream, uh, we've got two people we haven't even touched on yet. So uh, yes, lots, lots, more, lots more to say and lots more to, uh, talk, to talk, talk about. I shall be back, to, so I'll be back tomorrow with that. Come along on Monday to watch us carrying on with the stream and see how I get on with my um, beryllium antics. And then come along on Wednesday for the XCOM 2 stream, where hopefully we're going to be going out and uh, and prodding the aliens where it hurts and, uh, and, and and not losing too many of our people. We shall see how that goes, of course. Also check out the uh, the car-related videos that are popping up from time to time. You, if you're a, if you're a channel supporter, you'll get access to all these sort of the extra videos a week early. If you're not, then it'll be, it'll be a week later, but they'll still be uh, still be still be good fun and, and very worth checking out. So uh, as ever, keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.